Now the system's rebooting, as you can see. It's exactly what we expected after the install portion, and we should have the grub menu up shortly after the initialization of the disks. Here's the LSI logic, and the resolution's about to change to 640 by 480 because Grub displays by default in 640 by 480. Now here's the Grub menu. In order to avoid booting to the default OS, we'll just move the arrow key. Now there are two options provided by Solaris's Grub implementation. One is a default in implementation or the default installation of Solaris 10.106. This is the default kernel when things are operating correctly. You will select this option or Grub will default to this option after n number of seconds, n usually being 7 seconds. There is also a Solaris failsafe option in the event that the default kernel is unable to boot. That's the first option. So if there's problems booting the default kernel Use Solaris Failsafe, which will enter into a single user mode, which will allow you to rebuild the file system, which may include replacing the kernel or unlocking root's password and other things. So there are two options. Now we're not ready to go into Grub yet. Grub has a menu system which allows you to boot from different kernels and also allows you to boot additional operating systems that it's able to find on the disks on your system. We're going to go ahead with the default by just pressing enter. And you see the Sun OS 510 coming up. You'll also see the service management framework or the service management facility come up and load the services. The service names are not echoed to the screen as you may have typically seen with Linux distros but rather the SMF or service management facility simply echoes a number of number so N of O or P of Q for example indicating one number of, or number of packages of total number of pack or number of services of total number of services launched as you can see here the service descriptions have been reduced to 28 instead of 90 and momentarily we'll have our graphical login providing the X configuration works. So this is what is partially meant by the fact that Solaris 10 starts much quicker than prior versions of Solaris. SMF will fly through the 28 services including their dependencies and immediately take us to a console to attempt to log into the system for first time use at the resolution specified during installation 800 by 600 so what we specified during the installation will remain and nothing's echoed to the screen it's nice and clean and only if there's an error booting should you go to the Solaris or use the Solaris failsafe or the first CD or DVD ROM that comes with Solaris 10.01.06 great all the services have been loaded and let's move ahead with the final stages again we're not intervening here we're just narrating while the operating system comes up. Here's our default partition. And there's the console login that allows us to log in via the shell. And again, if the graphical environment does not work, this will be the interface that will be used. However, if the graphics card does work and it communicates properly with the 17-inch monitor, we won't have a problem. Now here's the default login. Now this is a 640 by 480 login instead of the 800 by 600. So we'll need to double check if there were any problems with the graphical installation. But nonetheless, we've successfully installed Solaris 10, although we have a 640 by 480 screen. This is Linux CBT Sun 1, and we are free to log in and make use of the system. Simply log in as the user root, followed by the password specified for the user root. And you may also select a desktop environment by navigating to session followed by Java desktop there's also the option to log in using the common desktop environment 
The common desktop environment is the older Sun Solaris desktop environment that's pretty much being deprecated in favor of GNOME as the default desktop for Solaris. Common desktop environment is much older and it's not as nice or as fluid as GNOME or KDE. The Java desktop system release 3 simply makes or beautifies the GNOME desktop environment. It makes it look better. There's a fail-safe session. We have the ability to remote log into a remote system that may be running the X Windows software or VNC or some other protocol similar to VNC. We may log in if we'd like from the command line. This is the option I mentioned where it defaults. The Solaris desktop defaults to the graphical login, but we do have the option to log in via command line by simply clicking on command line. And we can reset the login screen, which clears the username that we specified, in this case root, as well as the password. And here are the languages that are supported. The character sets or the locales that we installed support these various languages. Let's go ahead and click on enter to log in. And we're presented with two desktop environments. We'll go ahead and select Java Desktop System Release 3. Now 640 by 480 is considerably small for the environment. 800 by 600 is more ideal. It works better. Very first time you bring up the environment, you'll see a registration screen and here's our login again this is really meant for 600 for 800 by 600 which is why it's a bit skewed but we're going to look at this nice and cleanly from our other environment so for now let's just log out as root we're not ready to use the environment from this particular screen but the system is up and running and as mentioned from the login screen if you'd like you can go to options command line login and this takes you to a command line giving you the ability to log in so at this stage if we'd like we could log in as the same user root and here we have a shell to the newly installed Solaris system now, of course in the console mode the mouse doesn't work but we do have access to the system we can take a look at the file system see what processes are running and of course the shell that we're running is unforgiving it's the born shell which explains why the shell features such as tab completion and backspace don't work but nonetheless our system's up and running again we said we could look at the file system notice that the partitions are laid out the way we specify that they should be including the root file system which is roughly what we told it to be which is roughly 15 gigabytes and the other file systems including the swap which is about half a gigabyte. So let's exit. This will return us to the desktop environment. The login that is. And next we'll continue exploring the graphical environment. So we've successfully installed Solaris 10.106 in 640 by 480 mode with the console and with the partitions that we wanted to use.